the last session of the day. Thank you all for sticking around. My name is Coles Wilkinson, and I'm from a company called It's Learning. Uh, I'm also here with my colleague, Mr. Thomas Gunleiksrud, who's the head of It's Learning International and head of It's Learning Higher Education. So, wow, what a great opportunity to meet and present to education leaders here in Poland. Over the course of the next 40 minutes, I'm going to lay forth this agenda, which covers hopefully an inspirational introduction. My understanding and our understanding of the current state here in the Polish higher education system. We're going to introduce you to its learning, our company, our focus, and our solution offering. And then we are going to have a demo of its learning. So, a little bit more about me. I've been with it's learning for the last eight years, and as you can probably hear, I'm, I'm not Norwegian, even though the company is based in Bergen, Norway. I'm from the U.S., from Washington, D.C., and over the last eight years, I've had the pleasure of working with educational institutions all over the world. Universities, colleges, ministries of education, schools, cities, municipalities. And it's, been an, it's, it's always an absolute pleasure to do that because I love what I do and I'm passionate about helping academic institutions do the things that they want to do, achieve their goals. Now, how many of you all have heard of Jack Ma? Yeah, show of hands? I saw a few. Okay, well, if, you, if you've never heard of Jack Ma, Jack Ma is an incredible educational story. He's pretty much failed out of, at everything he's done. But if you know who he is, he founded and launched the biggest e-commerce solution provider in all of Asia. His net worth is $25 billion. And recently, in Davos, Switzerland, he gave some really interesting remarks about education. He, he, if, you, if you just Google Jack Ma Davos, and he's going to talk, you know, he's saying, education, there's a lot of challenges in education now. And if we don't change the way that we teach, in 30 years, we're going to be in a lot of trouble. And if you think about it, the things that we teach, the ways that we teach, they really haven't changed in the last 200 years. I mean, let's be real frank here. This is the Middle Ages. This was the Middle Ages. But if you think about it, this sage on the stage, this master of knowledge and information, disseminating that information to the pupils, the students, that was the model. In the Bologna process. And, you know, now, things were innovative, right? You got the printing press. That was innovative in education. That allowed academics to scale their knowledge beyond the confines of Poland or Italy or Cambridge. But even going to the 1880s, things were no different. Everybody's still sitting, even today. Look at the, look at the, the, the order. It's okay. It's, I'm, not, I'm not dissing it. But things are slow to change in education. Now, the 1980s, that brought some interesting times. The invention of the personal computer, it changed the world. Think about it. Think about the paradigm of how education and knowledge was dispersed and eventually interconnected, right? But the interoperability of the hardware systems, the disk drives, the operating systems, it's consolidated. And nowadays, I mean, frankly, it's no different than it was 400 years ago. The only difference is, is that the, the way that students can access and engage with, with content and curriculum, it's changed. But the order of things hasn't changed too much. So this last session of the day, parting thoughts. What does the future of education look like at your university? It's up to you. You're here. Thankfully, the government is behind you. 
Our understanding of what's happening here in Poland, it's really exciting. It's extremely exciting. The legislation that will, that will pass will give you the freedom, the flexibility to invest, to plan, to develop strategies that are going to shape the next 10 to 15 to 30, the next generation. This is an inflection point. We know that you've spent money on IT systems in the past. And that's good. You have to have the core. You have to have the infrastructure. Because you can't do anything else without that. But it's also our understanding that there's little evidence to support the fact, you know, did this actually improve the teaching? I was worried about if that was the laser or not. <laughs> did it improve the teaching? And ahead of you lies the challenge of building integrated IT ecosystems. So you get all this money, but you have to make it work together, right? There's a lot of people that talk about the next generation digital learning environment. This is the buzzword in our business. What we do, what it's learning's central focal point is helping teachers do the things they're already doing. The pedagogical processes, the teaching and learning processes, that actually directly translate into improving the teaching. These are some of our clients in Europe and abroad. These are great names, Stockholm University, Batshire University in Turkey. We're one of the leaders in learning management systems in Europe. And at the central focal point of what we do is help the teachers do the things they're already doing. One example of, of us moving into a market where we had no clients was Batsashir University in Turkey, in Istanbul. We started with 5,000 students. They thought that the, f the usability of the system was so simple and intuitive that they rolled it out to 20,000 students today. Vid, a specialized university in Norway. They really wanted to build a closer connection to students and decrease the dropout rates. I've heard several times over the last couple of days that student retention is paramount. And Arkada, University of Applied Sciences in Helsinki, Finland, chose to implement its learning because it was natively intuitive and of all the solutions that they tested, including some of the ones you've already heard from, they felt that its learning was the most intuitively designed solution that met the needs of their academic institution. And they say some things, some really nice things about us. You know, this is typical. Not many lecturers wanted to use our old platform. Not many students did either, but they want to use its learning. Very powerful. That was from an e-learning coordinator at Arcata University. How many, are, are there any e-learning coordinators here in the room? Okay, right. Oh, this is a big one. Mobile devices. How do you keep your students off the mobile devices, right? They're in the palms of your students' hands. They have tablets. They have smartphones. They are on the go. They are teaching and learning on the device that they have natively. Distance education, sorry, I missed one point. How many of you all have big distance education programs? This is a big country. Okay, most of your students then are coming to the campus then for the most part. But the chief financial officer, do we have any chief financial officers here? Chief information officers, COOs? So the real benefit of its learning, making it so easy to share centrally designed course plans, resources, and study materials, means that we can deliver the same high quality teaching at every single location. Now I know that the, you all probably have multiple campuses here, but quality control of the teaching and learning processes is, is really important. Now I mentioned that we are a European company, but we, more specifically, we are a Norwegian company unlike some of the other uh, solution providers that you've learned from today. We're a very proud Norwegian company. 
and we have about 400 employees. We are based in Bergen, Norway. This is the west coast of Norway, and I know you guys are probably staying uh, in, in touch with what's happening in the Olympics. I know that there's an excellent cross-country ski team here in Poland and biathletes, so. But in Norway, there is too, so. But we also have members here in Warsaw. Developers, testers, scrum masters, user experience designers. So we invest heavily in our product roadmap, in our product design, and we have resources right on the ground here in Warsaw. And we're not a rookie to this game. While many of you all may have never heard of us, we've been around for a while. It was really great to see a couple of familiar faces today that I've seen through the years um, in, in the building. Um, but we've grown. We're going to continue to grow. You can see through our footprint that we have most of our presence in Europe. We, of course, have the Polish language already translated into the platform, so that's already done. But we're also global. I mean, right now, my, Thomas and I are busy working not only here uh, today in Poland, but even beyond, abroad. There's a lot of countries that are very keen to invest and scale e-learning solutions just as you are. Some key facts, resource, resources that we put back into R&D, the platform, making it user-friendly, intuitive, 27%. Active users, 7 million. User adoption, whoa, this is really important. User adoption, what does that mean? That means the percentage of which your student body, your teachers, your faculty members, actually use the platform actively on a day-to-day -day basis. So if user adoption is really high, that means your technology spend is, well, it's being used, and that's good, right? And that will actively help improve the teaching and learning outcomes at your university. We are a cloud-based learning platform. We guarantee the platform is going to be available to you almost 100% of the time. We're very proud of the awards that we've won. There's some really great ones there. I'm not going to spend a lot amount of time talking about it, but we've, we win awards for our platform. We have a great solution. And we're very proud of it. And our focus is to delight the teachers, help them do the daily tasks that they're usually doing, but do them faster and better and more efficiently. To engage students, to teach them to love learning and achieve their greatest successes, to provide the most connected educational, educational platform in the world. What do I mean by that? Interoperability. Open architecture allows your university to have interoperable solutions that work together so that you have one single point of entry where a teacher can log in, create an assignment, upload a syllabus, monitor all of the reporting that's happening, use third-party tools that, you, that are unique to the Polish education landscape. But a really important one is you know, to understand the needs of our clients. Because if we don't truly understand what's important to you, how can we ever articulate the value for your entire institution? And I know there's some big universities here. I was talking with a gentleman earlier today, you know, 48,000, 50,000 students. These are not small institutions. And every single faculty might have different needs. So we have to take an active role to truly understand what's important to you so that we can articulate the value and show you the value that our solution delivers. And being here, we are very keen to begin working with you. It is an extremely exciting time here in Poland with the funding that will come through, with the insight that you've attained from this day how to write the grants, how to write the RFPs, how to facilitate the buying process so that you can do what you want to do. And again, getting back to the focus, delighting the teachers and engaging the students. Easier said than done. How do you do that? So this is a, this is a graphic. I call this the It's Learning Wheel. I can't take credit for it. But it underscores the way that we work and the way that our solution works. Well, it, 
it, it essentially operates in a continuum because these processes, they're continually happening. The planning, right? If you're teaching economics, you have to plan. What does your semester look like? How do you create engaging lesson plans so that you know that your students are going to grasp con conceptually the differences between micro and macroeconomics? How do you teach that, right? How do you do that? You obviously do it the way it's been done 200 years ago in front in the lecture hall, right? And then how do you understand what the students have actually learned? You do that through the assessment process. So we have great tools to help assessment take place. And then to truly understand, you have to be able to reflect upon what you've learned. So we have great tools for reflection, like e-portfolio tools. Now, to make this work, it's not just this simple. I mean, we focus on these core processes. But inevitably, you have to be able to work with other systems. Digital content. How do you take the content and make it seamless, make it work for a teacher? So that the teacher, all the teacher has to do is click a button, and that piece of content can be found and put into the course instantly. Timetabling solutions. Curriculum, learning objectives. Student information systems. Authentication systems. These are all parts of a next generation digital learning environment. How do you make that a seamless process? And then, inevitably, you have to get information out of the platform. So again, back to this open architecture, open APIs, we fully support all of the global standards that are common in this business, things like IMS. IMS is a big learning consortium that has standards for interoperability, content, uh, integrations, these sorts of things. But even if you do all that, you still have to have a user experience that's easy to navigate, simple, intuitive. With 10 to 12 faculties, how are you going to make an impact you have to train everybody, right? So you have to design a platform that works and works beautifully so that your users are going to instantly know how to, how to do the things that they are there to do, teach. You don't want them spending their time learning a new solution. It needs to be intuitive. So we have teams that, that build and focus purely on the user experience. And not just in a browser, on a smartphone too, on a tablet. This is the future. You know, as a professor, you have to keep this in mind, the context of where the learning will actually take place. So if, if you're designing lectures and you're presenting content to your students that is not applicable for being consumed on a smart device, well, maybe you should. So you have to be able to support and engage with mobile um, make the user experience on that device be simple and intuitive so that the most recent information is there. It's organized like, well, what modern web design looks like, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, these sorts of things. Give the students the information that they need on time, every time. Push notifications, bulletins, giving them the tools to engage on their devices. Reporting back to this need to show the improvement, right? With all of this investment, 200 million slotty over the last 10 years on big time IT systems, how are you gonna be able to gauge the effectiveness of what you have actually invested in? We have robust tools to help our teachers and also at, at large, our institutions with big data, data analytics, predictive analytics. There's some interesting things that we've learned over the last 12 months about how easy it is to actually detect dropouts, student dropout rates. Some very basic mathematical algorithms that go into this. But big data, your data, what are you going to do with it? It's yours. We're going to facilitate you all to use this data to effectively drive mission-critical decision and strategy at your university. 
Content. I know there's some content people in the room, but we have a fully functional LCMS, Learning Content Management System. Many moons ago, these used to be siloed solutions that cost a lot of money. Bad news is they rarely worked with any other systems. They kind of just lived in isolation and you'd have to have four or five different logins just to bring a piece of content into your classroom. With our library, we've built what I would call a, a state-of-the-art area for educators to find the content that they need that's most applicable for the disciplines that they're teaching. Some of the most exciting things that we've done in this is we've partnered with some really great OER, online education resource aggregators that have tagged content to curriculum and have put it into the learning platform so that teachers can find really great content. Content that formerly might take them, I don't know, three or four Google searches, four or five, ten minutes watching a video or two or downloading a PowerPoint that looks even remotely interesting. Well, they can find that just in time here in our library. More importantly, again, back to our open architecture, relevant Polish content can easily be incorporated into this library. And in many ways, this is, this is some of the most exciting things that we're doing right now. Okay. We're doing okay on time. I think we're going to give you guys a little demo. Test, test. Just a quick show, a, a quick show of hands. Who's actually seen its learning before or heard of its learning before? Yeah. So over the next few minutes, I'm going to log in as a few users. Firstly, Steve, the teacher. He's a professor at uh, a demo hypothetical university. Secondly, a student, Johan, who's enrolled in some courses that Steve is teaching. And then thirdly and lastly, a system administrator who's going to be able to access some of the great data analytics that I will show you. I promise you the platform's available in Polish. I just, uh, I'd rather do it in English. And if anybody would like a sandbox environment or demo access to a demo environment, I'm, we're happy to give that. Okay, so I've logged in as Steve Sutherland. Steve is a professor here at this university. Every user has a profile. Every user has the ability to customize their profile. The users have the ability to do, thing, do things like change the language, manage their files, have an e-portfolio. Importantly, when this teacher logs in, it's quite clear what's happening around him. This is the form of the recent updates. So Steve is teaching a bunch of courses here at the university. And when he logs in, he can see recent updates across all of the courses that he's teaching. The most recent activities that have happened in his courses, whether they're activities that he has created himself or reflections that students might have given overnight, for example. It's also quite clear that Steve knows what he needs to do. He has some follow-up tasks. It could be grading an essay that a student or 10 students turned in. And he also has mission-critical information as it relates to where he needs to be, his schedule, his meetings, his calendar, automatically integrated into a seamless dashboard landing page where all of this information is pretty neatly organized. 
So you can see that Steve's been creating a lot of things in his courses. He's added an assignment. He's added some content. Kim Smith, who's also a teacher, uh, added a test. So one of his peers that he's also teaching with added a test. So he can see the activities that are happening in the courses around him. And by the way, Steve can also be enrolled in professional development courses all within the platform to learn skills that might be relevant, to learn different methodologies for teaching, things like blended learning, supporting mobile learning, managing assessment for learning. Steve has a quick overview of who his students are. He can very easily see the most recent activities of all of his students all at once, or he could very quickly just go into a single course and see the last time a student Johan Christensen logged in. Just with a quick click, he's into Johan Christensen's contact card. He can see his most recent activities, meaning what he's done, when he turned it in, and what it was. He can see his most recent grades, and he can see how well Johan is working with the curriculum, the learning objectives here at the university. And importantly, if he sees that there's a need to have a, an intervention or a talk with Johan, he can do that very instantly by sending him a note. And for this part, I'm going to kind of bridge the gap between teacher and student. And as you can see on the right side of the screen, this is my phone. This is Johan Christensen's phone, the student. And on the left is Steve, the professor. So Steve can very easily send a note to, to Johan. He can say, hi, Johan. Did you receive my message about the assignment due at the end of the week? And Johan's out. It's a Friday afternoon. He's at the pub. Looking forward to a, a good weekend. And zzz, zzz. Oh, Steve Sutherland blowing him up. Steve, what do you want? Oh, okay, well, let's check. Johan, meanwhile, goes right into the message and says, Yes, I received your message, hyphen. I'm a bit busy at the moment. I got the assignment. I will turn it in on Monday, period. Don't sweat it, period. And just like that, whoa, right back at him. Okay? So the devices that your students are using, you have to be able to bridge this gap. Okay? And so the, the next portion of the user experience, I'm going to be really doing it from a phone, Johan's phone. Okay? And by the way, this is, this is just one example of you know, using the, the tools natively, intuitively, that are pretty easily accessible in the It's Learning platform. Now, again, you're looking at Steve, the teacher. That example was actually Steve sending a message to Johan, one-to-one -one communication. But how do you facilitate more than that, right? One-to-many, or one-to-thousands. You can do that. As we all know with some recent headlines that went awry, tsunami warnings, missile warnings, right? This is, but nevertheless, Steve, the professor, can send a note to biology, uh, his spring term course. He can say, remember that our semester starts on Monday. Well, let's get the typing right. Please check out the lesson plans and slides over the weekend if you have a chance. And this doesn't necessarily need to be Steve the professor. This could be Steve's TA, teaching assistant. Okay. But in this example, it was the, the professor sending it out to the 12 students that are in his bio, biology, bioscience course. Now, if you're curious what that course looks like, well, it's a rich course. Bioscience is, is, is really exciting. 
uh, topic. Um, sciences, I know, is a big, big important topic here. Uh, but this is Steve's course. He's teaching it with a few other professors. Paul, Runa, and Kim. And these professors are working together. They're collaborating on this course. I'm sure you guys do this. I'm sure you, you have it. And Steve's message to his to his teachers, or to his students, was to get into the lesson plans and check it out. Biosciences course outline, biosciences introduction, these are some slides. And importantly, to be a global solutions provider, you have to work with all of the things that are already being used in education. Things like Office 365, Google Drive, all of these sorts of things. And you can actually do your teaching right from here. You know, you upload your, every single professor has PowerPoints. So you could very easily just put this up on the big screen and you're teaching in lecture hall right now. So all your preparation can be pre-done. Your faculties can collaborate beautifully and design great courses that, 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 that can be used year over year over year, semester over semester over semester. Now in the, in the interest of time, um, I'm just going to do a few other quick things really quickly. Uh, I believe there's just a few minutes remaining. Um, I'm going to log in, lastly, as a system administrator. I, I know there's probably some IT managers here and some, some IT uh, people in the room. So I'm going to log in as a system admin. In this particular admin has access to all sorts of things, global settings. We're not going to spend the last few seconds talking about that. I'm going to talk a little bit about the advanced reporting things that we do. So we have the ability to give you the mission critical data just in time, giving you not only what's happening, but the ability to tell the story behind it, which is incredibly powerful. And up until the last 18 months, this really didn't exist. I mean, you could do it. It was totally bespoke. We work with a, one of the best platform providers in the world called Tableau. You guys have probably heard of Tableau. It's, it's widely used uh, in, in other different businesses and industries. But Tableau gives your institution the ability to tell the story of what's happening. And if you think about it, isn't that what, what this is all about, this whole initiative? How are you going to actually make an impact with the funding that you're invariably going to get? How are you going to help improve the teaching and learning processes? Well, big data can help. Big data can help in a big way. And I think that if you're not, if this isn't on your radar screen, I think it's something that you, you should really consider because this is very powerful stuff. The ability to look at millions of data points, arrange it in a meaningful way, they can help tell the story. They can help shape your strategy for the next 10 years. And I say that with some emphasis because you guys are going to be investing money. And this is not a transaction that is, is, that's just in one day and out the next. Most of our clients have been with us for over 15 years. If you think about that, it's almost a generation. We've only been around for 18 years. So to grow and to drive innovative use of the way that learning management systems should be, should be I think that we're a great pace setter for this. We're one of the most innovative companies in the world. We're very passionate about what we do. And if there's any questions about how its learning can add value to your institution, my colleague Thomas and I are here to answer them. So, I thank you for your attention. This is the end of the day. I appreciate it.